I've been gifted this item, the MHP30 Mini Hot Plate 30, uh, I guess, um, by PCBWay to make up a board. And I'll be using this device, I guess, from now on, wherever I can, to make up the boards, which I can do at home if I can't get these things assembled. The boards also here were made by PCBWay, and as you can see, they absolutely look phenomenal, not by my design, but by the manufacturing and build quality of them. I've always used PCB Way in, in the past and for previous projects on this channel, and I'm really glad with how the results came out. I don't have any complaints whatsoever, and anything that I did for other products, they do offer 3D printing and CNC and such. I have used the 3D printing services before for my job and every step of the way with getting through because I'm not as talented as mechanical, a, a talented mechanical engineer or electronic engineer for that matter. But me doing some 3D modeling stuff, they've been very helpful in guiding me throughout the process and everything. And I'm absolutely glad to be collaborating with this, with them on on this item. So this item itself is, as I said before, it's a mini hot plate. It's USB-C powered. It's detachable. It's quite an interesting design really as it's got pins to power the device and I'm not too sure why this would be detachable. I guess maybe if the heating element died I mean, it's a case of modularity but <laughs> me being me I would love to open this up and actually see what's going on inside because it's, it's absolutely adorable in itself but also I've done a, re a little bit of a reflow with it and after I after I filled around with it and got it to work with what I needed to with well, when I say that I mean me just upgrading the temperature I managed to reflow a bit and it's the first time I've ever done something like this at home with this with a hot plate of this usually I'm trying to do all sorts of weird wacky methods of putting in the frying pan or putting in the oven realizing of a, an oven that's not being used so there's all these other different kinds of methods but I've always been, I've been on the lookout for a hot plate for a while and I'm glad to actually actually have this one because I do have a few projects more in mind and I do say this every time that I will get stuff done and I do try to get stuff done and we are making good progress on this channel. But it was this light sensor over here and I have put a little soldering video in the description for this where it outlines what I've actually needed to be done. So it's this light sensor here and the reason I've been looking out for a hot plate even though I do have a hot air gun and a soldering station and whatnot. I could do it all myself, is I keep breaking this little device over here. I kept on destroying it. I've probably went through 10 of these ICs and you know they're pr they're a pretty penny to me to, to replace these. So I decided you know what I really need to get a, a hot plate and if I can't do the assembly way I should, um, I need something to do at home. So I did, I went with this and I'm really glad with how it turned out even just this small bit the potential is there and I'm really glad to have this item. With this item or the MA330. We'll plug it in. So I've plugged the item in. You can get this in two forms where it comes with a power, a PD, a power delivery adapter, I believe, or just by itself. I need to buy a power delivery adapter. Actually, I'm using a laptop charger at the moment and just works just as well. Though I would like a little dedicated thing for this instead of me just scrounging around for whatever. It has two mode settings and heating. Uh, it comes with a set of instructions, Very, it's very useful. We can have preset temperature, so I think we can have up to a bit, so if we... I think if you hold B, so there's not really an on and off button, you just pull it out the socket and that. So if we press A, there's two buttons on the back here, A and B. The, it's very useful, the green light, the, to say that it is low temperature, uh, below 50 degrees, so you're not going to burn yourself. Red, it will turn red to indicate it's very hot, and I think white is just when it's just chilling I suppose. So if we press a short press for A to indicate start heating, so if I press A, you can see here that it has started heating. 25, 26, uh, 20 volts and it's building its way up and it's taking the time it takes. If we hold down B in heating mode, we can long press A to enter adjustment mode. So right now it's set to 200. We can, we can decrease it to whatever we want here, we can increase it here. But let's say we want a hundred degrees. So we'll leave that for a bit, then we're just gonna let it go on and it's settled. It's settled there. It'll start heating, it'll start heating and once it reaches time, it'll kind of just linger at there at your set temperature. So you can see it's at amber at the moment to indicate that it's gone white again. So there's a hot reach, a hot red hot plate in high temperature over 200 degrees. Which is fine. So you see it's reached, it's, it's kind of flickering. It'll probably readjust itself in the time being. So right now we're in heating mode. If we long press B, 
B, we can exit out heating mode and we have it into this settings, this settings page where we can flick through what we have. So we have M2, M3, M1. We have the sleep time, so will the device go to sleep? We have a, we can increase the backlight of this, tilt angle, show type voltage, the volume of the beep, uh, the degrees, so I guess we can change the Fahrenheit, low current on. I'm guessing this is low current. But I mean, for the presets, um, what we can do is, it's quite useful actually, I think. For that, if I did, if you did have various using of solder paste and whatnot, we could have a preset and for whatever solder paste is required from there. So it is quite, it is quite useful. If we long press B again, we enter, I guess, the version. I guess a little settings page on what it is. And we can return back to heating that way. So it's a very nifty little tool. And I think for prototyping and for what I want to do, on this channel and such. I think it's an absolutely perfect little tool to have. And even I did not get the full board on here, even just placing it like this on so with partially or even partially holding, it did do the trick. So I'm well impressed with what it is, especially the build quality on this device. It's absolutely phenomenal. It looks gorgeous and I really don't have any complaints from here. Again, I have another video eliciting how I reflowed this device and what I did to try and get it to work as well, a bit more described on what was I doing for this for this project. But for this board, I was making a little sensor breakout board. And for that, I wanted to test a very variety of sensors. So I had a light sensor on here. I had an accelerometer, a barometric pressure, I believe, or is it something of a gas sensor, pressure sensor maybe, and a standard temperature humidity sensor on the end here. And I'm really quite impressed with how it's turned out to be. I can't wait to solder the rest of it. I just need to get components through. So I am I placed the order through and I will be soldering them up. I will have a separate video on probably hand soldering, maybe hot air gun, some of these components. As again, a lot of the times that on this channel I want to elicit what the design process actually looks like. And that it's not just only you know you using Altium or KiCad, KiCad, Easy EDA, using these tools to make designs and getting them. It's also you need to know the practical side of this field and I think it's really quite valuable into knowing how to solder these components getting the practice and even though you may not like it it's a useful skill to have to to maybe cut tracks and you do some soldering wire botching everything it is quite it's quite useful in a sense and unfortunately we spend probably 95% of our lives facing downwards hunched back looking at our boards and admiring them in all their glory or fixing them if you're like me just fixing them up because nothing ever works in this case it did work so we had a little scan of an i2c scanner and we show that the the light sensor was responding back. So I'm quite happy with that. Again, a big thanks to PCBWay for this little sponsor of this device. It's it's been very nifty and helpful in this matter. And um, I will leave a web, I'll leave a link down to in the description for their products and services. Please do check them out uh, for anything you have. I haven't really played around with the rest of the settings on here, but I will be doing that. So and probably use this more as the as the time comes by. As well, I will leave a link to this item over here if you think you want to pick something, if you wish to pick something up on this matter. Oh, it also flashes red for a warning, I guess, to, to indicate, but I probably should stop playing around with that.